Hello folks. So in this video, I'm going to continue working on Space Invaders in Pygame. I'll run the code from last time to show you how far I got. So you can see I've now got the aliens firing bullets back at me, and I can still fire my own bullets at them. But of course, I don't have any collision between anything going on right now. So that's what I want to focus on in this video. So the first thing that I want to do is add collision between my bullets and the aliens. And that's quite straightforward to add because I'm using these sprite, class, uh, sprite classes and groups. There's built in functionality for looking for this kind of collision. So I can just come in here where I've got my update function within the bullets class and add another pygame function, which is pygame.sprite.sprite collide. So this is going to look for collision between my sprites uh, or my groups of sprites. So the first one is the sprite that I want to check for, and that is going to be my bullet. So all I need to do here is just say self, because I'm looking, I'm checking if the bullet itself has come into contact with something else. And that something else is my alien group. So I'll put in here, alien group. So the benefit of using uh, this function uh, and these sprite groups uh, in general if I had done this a different way, for example, I could have created a Python list instead. And for every alien that I created, I would have simply added it to that list. So I would have ended up with having a full list that contains all of the properties, the X and Y values of these aliens. But then if I wanted to check for collision, I would have to iterate through them. So I would do a for loop and go through each of the aliens within my list and check for a collision between this bullet and that particular alien. So this function, although it would work in the same way, it's, it's working to check between the bullet and all the aliens within that group. It just saves you a bit of coding. It kind of adds all that functionality within this one line of code. But there is one more variable, uh, one more argument that I need to add, and this is the do kill. So this is a Boolean value that I already set to true or false. And this is going to determine whether the target needs to be uh, destroyed from its group or not. So if I set this to false, uh, let me just run the code to see what happens. And I'll just shoot at the aliens. Nothing's still happening. The bullets are just passing straight through. Collision is being detected, but nothing happens. I have no outputs from it. Now let me just change that to true and run again. And now the aliens are being destroyed. So what it's doing is it's going through that group and as soon as it detects a collision between the bullet and one of the spaceships in that group, it just removes it. Of course, you will have noticed a bit of a problem here that my bullets just keep going. So once they hit an alien, they just keep going past it. And that's how I've been able to pretty much wipe out all of the aliens. So to avoid that, I need to come in here where I've put pass and I need to make sure that I destroy the bullet once it uh, kills the alien. So I just add in that self dot kill that I had above. So let's try that again. And now the bullets disappear. So the bullets themselves also get destroyed. Okay, so that's fine. That's easy enough. Now I need to do the same functionality for the alien bullets. And I'll start off uh, in kind of the same way. However, the collision that I'm I'm looking for is going to be different, but I'll start off in the same way just to show, uh, highlight the differences. So the function is the same, pygame.sprite.sprite collide, and it's going to be between self, which is the alien bullet, and then my spaceship group. So again, this is another benefit of having these groups. Although I only have one spaceship, I can just check between uh, the collision object and the group. This time I want to set to false because I don't actually want the spaceship to be destroyed straight away. If you remember, the spaceship had a health bar. So instead, what I want to do is reduce spaceship health. And I will do that by getting my spaceship object or instance and just lowering the remaining health by one. And of course, the other thing I need to do is make sure that the bullet gets destroyed. So self.kill. Okay, so let's uh, run this code and check that's working fine. And I'll just try and take some damage here. Okay, it works. And you can see straight away the health bar is also working well. There is a problem though, and I'll see if I can show it up. 
So, of course, this is my spaceship outline, okay? But notice what happens if the corner comes in contact. So when the bullet comes into this empty space, it still counts as a collision. So why is that happening? Well, if I come back into my spaceship class, if you remember when I create the spaceship, it creates a rectangle from the image. So that spaceship, although the image is only the shape of the, uh, well, the shape of the spaceship, it actually has a rectangle around it. And when I'm using this function, it looks for rectangular collision. So in here is another argument. And if you don't add this argument in, then by default, it's left as a rectangular collision. But in my case, I don't want to look for rectangular collision. I want to look for pixel perfect collision. So I want essentially everything that is not the spaceship to be ignored when the bullets come into contact with it. So for that, I need to use a mask. So when I come back into my alien, or sorry, my spaceship class, I can add in a little section here uh, below all of my controls where I take the spaceship image and I convert or I create a mask from it. Update mask. Uh, and the mask essentially is just, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a picture of each individual pixel that is not transparent. So if you're using images like I am using here, for example, I'm using PNGs, they have a transparent background. So anything that is outside the spaceship does not count. It would create a rectangle from it because it still contains it. But as long as I update the mask from it, it will ignore anything that is transparent. So I'll say self.mask equals, and this is pygame.mask.from surface. And the surface that I want to generate this from is my image, self.image. So with this mask created, and the reason I've put it into my update function is so that it updates as I move the spaceship left and right, I can now come back into here and add in this additional argument. And this is going to be pygame.sprite.collide underscore mask. So I could put anything in here. I could choose, by default, this is rectangular collision. So I could put collide uh, and check for rectangular collision, I could search for circle collision, in this case, I'm looking for mass collision. So let me run this again just to double check and I'll try and line it up so it goes into that uh, black corner. There you go. You can see it passes the spaceship body and then it actually only collides when it comes in contact with the wings. So that there is, well, pretty much a uh, pixel perfect collision because it is ignoring anything that is not the spaceship. So. With that example, I just wanted to show the differences between the kind of collision that you can use. And in reality, there's a lot more uh, methods that you could use within Pygame. Uh, the more complicated and the more accurate they become, the more resource intensive it's going to be. So for a simple game like this, it doesn't really matter. But if you have a whole bunch of sprites and you're looking for mass collision with all of them, then there's potential that it could slow the game down. Uh, and so it doesn't mean that you should just use mass collision for everything. You know, there are situations where rectangular collision, circle collision, they would be sufficient. So with that, uh, I'll just run again to make sure that uh, everything else is still working. Yeah, so everything's fine. Uh, the only thing is, of course, well, the spaceship doesn't actually end. There's no, um, no explosions, nothing like that. So I'm going to work on that all in the next video. Uh, I'm going to stop this one for now. So if you find this useful, then please do leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with more of these tutorials, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.